What's up, YouTube? We're going to do a video game list today. I know. I'm excited, too. Today, we are going to count down my top five favorite PS4 exclusives. All right, top five favorite PS4 exclusives. Let's get right into the list. I will explain as I go down the list and tell you why this fell into this slot. And I only picked five games. I know this was hard. I kind of looked through, I'm like, oh, I kind of like this one, kind of like that one. Um, but I went for the five that I had the most fun with and that I'm still having the most fun with. Number five, we will start out with God of War. Some people are gonna be like, why is this so low on your list, Tom? Shouldn't you have God of War higher? God of War was great. God of War is fun and it's really good. For whatever reason, I have a hard time. I had a hard time getting into it at first, uh, and I don't know if it was the dynamic between Kratos and his son, or the axe, or just the scope of it all, or I just it was. I got stuck a couple of times. Um, it was great, and when it was great, it was really great, and that's sort of why it's still on this list. Because when it was great, it was really, really great. But when it wasn't great, it was like. Kind of a slog and a little bit like, okay, let me look this up, okay. Ugh. So that's sort of my reasoning for God of War being number five. The highs were super duper high. It was like, oh, some of those, oh my God, this is the greatest thing. And then like the lows, no spoilers by the way. And the lows were like, oh my God, I, I'm just gonna stop playing for now. It didn't sort of grab me and keep me the entire time where like I couldn't shut it off. And as I get closer up the list, we'll get to ones that I literally couldn't shut off. So yeah, that was number five, God of War. And I don't have, I have, it, I have it digitally, so I will have put the case on the screen, but I've got the other cases for the other games because I have them physically. Uh, number four, Gran Turismo Sport. Now Gran Turismo and I have sort of a very long uh, relationship, we'll say. Uh, I've played since Gran Turismo 2, uh, and I think I've played just about all of them. Uh, maybe I don't think I maybe I didn't have Gran Turismo 4. I think that's the only one I didn't have. But uh, I've played just about every Gran Turismo since then, and this one's fantastic. Now, the thing about Gran Turismo is it's a great pick up and put down game. You can play Gran Turismo for like 20 minutes every day, do some make some accomplishments, go a little further in the game, and it's great. Or you could spend a whole day playing Gran Turismo. And that's great too, and you get better at driving and all that stuff. Uh, the thing I really like about Gran Turismo is that it, a lot of racing games tend to get frustrating, and I feel like Gran Turismo is very calculated with how the difficulty tends to level up. Drivers get faster as you get better, but there are a lot, a lot of races to do, especially now. They continue to add more and more and more, and there's more and more and more cars, and it really has just been a fun game throughout the whole generation to keep picking up and keep going back to it's great to be able to pick up Gran Turismo play for a little bit set it down you know you take it back out set it down for another couple weeks couple months whatever and then come back to it and it's fun and it's new again and there's new cars to explore new tracks to explore and it's all free you don't have to pay for downloads or anything like that you buy the game and for the whole generation it's been updated and a lot of fun and uh, I still go back to Gran Turismo a lot I've had it now for like three years it came out in, what, 2016 or something? I, 2017, yeah. So I've had it for three years. I got it in late 2017. And, or I got it pretty much right when I got my PlayStation. Maybe that was early 2018. But anyway, uh, great. It's been great ever since, and it's been a lot of fun, and I continue to pick it up, and I continue to have fun with it. I continue to get new cars, continue to go to new races. Uh, online mode is great. It's great to race people online. I'm not good enough, and I don't do it often enough to do very well, but uh, it's great too, and just... The whole thing about Gran Turismo has been great, and it's been great for the whole generation, so Gran Turismo is my number four. One of my most played games as well, just because I keep picking it back up. Uh, the next one is Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. I love Uncharted. Really do. Love Nathan Drake. Uh, love the whole aspect of climbing, shooting, running, adventures, all that stuff. It's wonderful. And Uncharted 4... Probably the best one. I'm not going to say. Uncharted 2 was really good too. It's either for me about the same. Um, but Uncharted 4 was great. Uh, played great. The multiplayer is fun. And just what a fun game. 
Uncharted 4. How cool is it to be Nathan Drake again? Uh, special, uh, you know, there was also the other Uncharted that came out, and its name escapes me. It's fine, too, but it's sort of the prequel to Uncharted 4, I guess. The other Uncharted for, for PlayStation. But Uncharted 4. Uh, love it. Love it to death. It's actually free on PS Plus right now, so if you have PS Plus, you get Uncharted 4. And PlayStation just gave you 1, 2, and 3, so essentially, if you have PS Plus, the entire Nathan Drake Uncharted collection, all four games, are yours to have now, because it's amazing. Um, but Uncharted 4, super great game. I know it's been a while. It's, it came out a while ago, but, uh, what, 2016. But just a phenomenal game, and, uh, Something I really, really enjoy, and a game that I want to go back to and do a little bit more with. So, uh, Uncharted 4. Super great. Now my top two. So, my top two games are games that I literally could not stop. I would sit, and I, I could literally get lost for six, seven, eight hours playing them, and if you have a wife and kids, six, seven, eight hours straight playing video games and making it go by like that uh, is kind of crazy. Uncharted can get that way for me sometimes too, but these ones really were just like, oh my god, enthralling. What happens next? Uh, and number two was Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, I very much love Horizon Zero Dawn, and uh, I still want to go back and clean up a lot of the side quests and stuff that I haven't done, because it's phenomenal. Uh, the best, just, the combat was amazing. The everything, the story was incredible. It really, like, the combat for this really was just, it, it really kind of blew my mind. Um, such a good game. Such good combat. So many options to explore. You could sort of approach combat however you wanted in this. And it wasn't that sort of like, oh, I've just got all these things and, you know, I only use half of them. You could decide what to use. I chose bows and arrows. I love bows and arrows. Any game. Uh, so I had two, three different bows in my slot most of the time. Unless I needed to use something else, which... I really just did for the for the little achievements and stuff. I, I basically just used bows the whole time, and uh, it was amazing. I, you could switch on the fly. It was exciting. It was fast paced. The story, oh my god, the story was amazing. It's so like, oh my god, it was entrenched. It was so entrenched. The combat was great. Loved just hunting monsters. In fact, part of the thing for this game for me was I did so many of the side quests that by the time I was like, oh yeah, I should get back on the main quest line. I was already so far far ahead of levels. I was like, "Oh, this isn't this isn't that hard. Why am I? These guys aren't hard to fight." And I would just wreck things because it was like, "Oh, I'm I've, I'm ten levels ahead of this, or whatever." So it was uh, it was fun. That was fun too to sort of just be mega powerful because I did all the side quests. Those were hard because I was under leveled for some of them, but amazing. Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, still love it. It's coming to PC. Uh, honestly, probably when I buy a PS5, I'm hoping that. For uh, holiday 2021, Horizon, Zero, Horizon 2 will be part of a bundle pack with a PS5, and that's what I'll buy. And hopefully it comes with a sweet controller uh, for Horizon. Move the cool H on it or something. It'd be sweet. But Horizon Zero Dawn, number two. Love it. Number one, my favorite. And those of you guys who know me or see my shirt or uh, have just had anything to do with me talking about my love of nerdy things won't be surprised. My number one favorite for this generation, for PS4, Spider-Man. PS4, Insomniac Spider-Man is just, mm. So this is like everything I've ever wanted a Spider-Man game to be all wrapped up together. New York is beautiful, it's perfect. All of the quests are great. The main quests, the side quests, 100% of this game. My son is actually working on it a second time, but 100% of the main story of this game. Unlocked all the costumes, did all the quests, love it, love it to death. Um, the swinging was good. You could just swing around the city. Literally, that's all you had to do. You could just swing around the city, and that was fun. Uh, breaking up crimes was fun. Being Spider-Man, you felt like Spider-Man in this, and I loved every single second of it. I loved the story. I loved the characters. I loved everything. I cried at the end of this game. If you've played the game, you know why I cried toward the end of the mainline story of this game. Even the expansion was great. The uh, City That Never Sleeps, the like three chapters afterwards. Those were really good. Lots of fun, lots of challenge. The game itself wasn't too hard, although you could ramp up. I didn't really ramp up the challenge to much degree. I think I played on what's either normal or whatever they called them, because it was like Amazing Spider-Man, 
superior Spider-Man, whatever. I think I ramped it up from amazing, which was like normal, to the next level for for part of it because I was like, it kind of felt a little too easy. So again, I did a lot of the side quests too. So it was like I sort of outleveled the story at, to a, to a degree. Uh, so I ramped it up for a little while to to kind of give myself a little bit more of a challenge, but. Really, just a wonderful game throughout. Uh, all of the challenge was there if you went, if you decided to bump up the difficulty level. But at the same time, it's accessible enough for a six-year-old to play it. So, really can't say enough about it. And it looks amazing. I don't know if there's a better-looking game uh, on PS4 than Spider-Man. This might be the best-looking game of the generation. But uh, this Spider-Man PS4, absolutely my number one favorite game of the generation. Uh, it's just it's just the best. It was it was the best. Uh, I've tried to play everything. Uh, lots of other good games too. Honorable mention to Days Gone, which I'm playing right now. Uh, I feel like Days Gone could have used an editor a little bit. It kind of starts really, really slow. Once you get into it, it gets a little better. Um, but I feel like they could have cut the cut the campaign down a little bit. Didn't necessarily need to be so much main storyline. Could have been a little bit less of that. But that's my opinion, guys. And uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. What are your top five favorite PS4 exclusives? But uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers to you. I'll see you next time.